Okay, hi friends. Um, yes, my mouth looks a bit weird when I'm talking. I just got three teeth pulled. So now I have no front teeth on the top, which sucks. But anyway, that's life, I guess. Especially when you have autism. So anyway, today I'm going to be making a video because for the last week or so, I've been trying to promote as much as possible a GoFundMe page. And this is a very special GoFundMe page. It's very important to me. And I'm trying to get as much, I'm trying to share it to as many people as I can. But one big thing that I keep coming across that keep, people keep telling me is that, no, I'm playing fetch with Cookie, um, that it's too hard to read it all. I mean, it's, it, the, the description that's on the GoFundMe page is very long and I understand that. But it's long because I'm trying to explain the entire situation to people that may not know anything about me. They don't even know I exist. And so they have no idea of my backstory. And so I'm trying to provide as much information as possible so that anyone that watches this video can understand. And then I just thought, because, you know, my brain takes a bit to catch up, especially these days, um, that... I should film a video and then I can link the GoFundMe page in the description uh, of this video on YouTube so I can just link people the video they can watch it and then if they want to or if you want to you're watching this now if you would be able to donate or even just share this video it would mean the world to me it also could mean that you guys could help me out with something else because I have two big goals in mind, which I will talk about. But first, I'm going to give you a bit of backstory. So here we go. So on my phone, I've got my GoFundMe page up. And I'm going to uh, read slash paraphrase what I have written on the GoFundMe page as it is. I will be um, adding things in if I think it needs a little bit more explanation or a different word or something. So it's not going to be word for word the same. Okay. So anyway, I am having a smoke, sitting outside in the shade. It's really hot today. It's like 34 degrees here in Brisbane. I live in Australia. Um, it's very hot at the moment. And because, well, first of all, I have two dozen medic, uh, medical conditions. I'm severely disabled and I'm in the process of getting ready in the next six to 12, nine months to have a below, double below the knee amputations both legs one operation and I'll explain why and this is why I'm asking for help because I have two big goals and they have to happen before the surgery and so I need help because it's only six to nine months I mean for years I've been told it would be you know at this point you know 2022 by the time I you know I'm 30 years old now I turned 30 this year that between being 30 and 35, I would have to have at least one more operation. And so I thought I had until I was like, like another five years. But it's gotten to the point where it's so bad, I can't wait another five years. I cannot wait that long. I can't handle it. I can't do it. I'm tired and I need help and I need my leg cut off. Because they're a big problem. And oddly enough, cutting my feet off will mean that my pain levels will go down. Yes, I know there's phantom pain and I know it's not painless, but regardless, my pain will probably go down at least some and my mobility will be better. Who thought cutting off your feet would reduce your, uh, increase your mobility? What the heck? How backwards is that? Anyway, I'm going to stop going off on this random tangent. I'm going to start reading. Okay, so hello. If you don't know me, my name is Lacey Page. As I said, I am 30 years old, um, as in 2022, um, I turned 30. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'm getting so old. I guess I still got the brain of a five year old regardless of what, how many years I've been alive. So it doesn't bother me. Um, anyway, so like I said, I have over two dozen medical conditions. They will all be linked um, below. I will also link another video I did where I listed them all out and gave a little bit of a description for some of the 
ones that aren't commonly known. Um, so I'll link that below and the list of all my um, medical conditions. And I'm happy to help anyone who has any of these medical conditions or know somebody or care for somebody or if you're just damn curious, ask me what you want. I'm, ha I'm an open book. I'm happy to share. Um, anyway, I'm going to keep reading because otherwise my tangents can get very long. So, um, because of all my medical conditions and the fact that I knew that I had a surgery coming up and because of the extreme abuse I su suffered as I, I grew up in hospitals and at, in doctor's offices and every kind of specialist you can think of, um, aside from cancer specialists, because I don't have cancer, thank God. Um, otherwise, I've seen pretty much every other one. So, um, I do have an assistance dog, Cookie, um, which I'm playing fetch with him now. I'm going to get him to hop up on my lap so you guys can see him. Cookie, up, up. Good boy. Oh, thank you. Good boy. So, that's Cookie. I do have another video showing about Cookie. Oops, crap. I just threw his ball over the fence. I'm sorry, Cookie. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, crap. Landed in the neighbor's yard. Anyway, we'll have to deal with that later. We'll finish filming this first. He'll be all right. Um, so not only am I 30 years old and I have two dozen medical conditions, but every year that I've gotten older, my body has deteriorated more and more. At this point, I've had arthritis for 25 years. My bones, when I was 19, 11 years ago, I was told my bones look like that of an 80 year old or a 90 year old. So what the heck are my bones going to look like when I am 80 or 90, if I make it that long? Um, so anyway. Um, so because of all that, I'm in chronic pain. Hence why I begged my surgeon to cut off my legs, to reduce my pain and increase my mobility. Anyway. So if you were com to combine all the pain, symptoms and physical deterioration of everyone living in a large retirement village, say. So, I don't know how big large retirement villages are, actually, now I think about it. Say so there's 50, 80 people in there? I don't know, let's just guess. We'll say there's 50 in there. Put them all together and combined, they're still better off than me. And I'm 30, which sucks. Um, and I've been like that since the moment I was born. Yay me. Um, the other problem is that when I was growing up, I was a guinea pig for a surgeon. Um, and he basically used me to find out all the ways of how not to f fix problems when people were born the way I was, how, all the ways how not to do it. And so now my feet are screwed after 14 botched operations when it was meant to make me better and every single one not only failed, but maybe worse. Think about that. 14 times. They opened me up, they cut into me, and made me worse. And I was born screwed. As far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't have done 14 operations. They should have done one or two. And in that one or two operations, cut my legs off at that point. They should have done the, the double amputations the minute I was born instead of within the first hour having my first botched operation, they should have cut my legs off. I would have been much better off growing up. I would have been much better off now. I would be much better off in the future. I might be able to actually have kids because I can't. And yes, I don't just mean physically I can't have a kid preg like pregnancy wise. I mean, I cannot raise a kid. I can't take care of them. I can barely take care of myself. I have to have a carer and an assistance dog to help take care of me. How am I meant to take care of a kid? I can't, even though what I want is like a family of like fucking 20 kids. If I could, I would have as many kids as I could, but I can't, which hurts. Especially when I see people that have kids and they abuse them or they neglect them or 
they do horrible things to them and it's like it's not fair i would give anything to be able to have kids even just one and there's people out there who have kids and do horrible things it man it pisses me off anyway i'm gonna get back to reading or i'll go on another tangent so the surgeon that did my 14 operations um did them all to advance his own career um which it did he became one of the top known as one of the top surgeons he um got very rich was able to retire because of all the things that he did to me um and all but one of the operations was done before my fourth birthday in the first three years of my life i had 13 operations so that was fun thankfully i don't remember most of it but i still do still have ptsd um because i was not only abused by medical staff i was abused by other people and possibly even some people that i'm not even sure if they were medical staff or not um and they did horrendous things to me i am planning to do a series of like some stories of uh, some of the abuse that i went through as a kid to share and bring awareness to what can happen just because someone's a doctor or a nurse doesn't mean they're a saint okay so once i have this operation i'm going to be limited to a wheelchair possibly up to a year at the minimum because of all my conditions um my recovery time won't be the same as somebody who's healthy and lost their leg through trauma or an isolated condition or something um because my whole body is screwed up screwed up and my mind so there's that um so i've gone and seen a prosthetic person prosthesis I don't know what they're freaking called. But anyway, I went and saw one. And even though they can't tell me, my surgeon can't tell me either, nobody can tell me if I'm going to be refined, confined to a wheelchair for the rest of my life after this operation or not. Basically, I could either be completely wheelchair bound, never be able to use prosthetics, or I may be able to use the prosthetics all day and barely ever use a wheelchair or anywhere in between. So it, it's not... Um, this isn't a um this isn't a hell and Mary. this isn't gonna fix my life it's not gonna fix my problems it's not gonna fix my pain it's not gonna fix my mobility it's just gonna not make it worse hopefully <laughs> um there's very little chance of my mobility getting less um from the operation which is thankful um, there's a possibility my pain will stay the same, but, um, yeah, I'm willing to take that chance. Um, <laughs> so, it is the end of November at the moment, um, in 2022. <laughs> I'm sitting outside on the grass with no shoes on, and just bit my foot. So, oh, that's better. So, my dad is coming in a few weeks. He comes about the middle of December to celebrate Christmas with me. And me and him and my friend and uh, partner and Kara and um, my nephew and his friend and a really good friend of my partner and I, um, we all want to go and stay at this house for a few days while my dad's over from WA and celebrate Christmas together. And one of the reasons why I want to do this so much and why I need your help is because, oops, I lost the page. Hmm. Oh no. Um, when I was a teenager, and my body hadn't deteriorated as much yet. Um, I loved dancing. I was dancing since I was eight years old and 
I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Dancing is like my life force. But because of my disabilities, I've had to stop dancing. And because I don't know if I'll even be able to walk after this operation, I probably will never be able to dance. Even if I can walk, I doubt I'd be able to dance ever again. So, all the people that are coming to celebrate Christmas at this house that we want to rent for a few days, they've all stood up and said, when you go through this surgery, I will be there helping and supporting you. And so, before I get this, before I get the amputations, while I still, I can't dance for long, but I can dance for a few minutes, it may cause me to be in a lot of pain, but I'm willing to do that because I want to dance for all, all these people that are supporting me one last time. I want to do my hair and my makeup and get dressed up in a costume and dance for them for the last time. Of course, I will also be filming this. I do want to upload it onto YouTube um, to show um, it. I also am trying to get in contact with a bunch of the morning shows in Australia, like um, Sunrise, The Morning Show, Today, all those sorts of things. Although I think today is American, I don't know. Anyway, I'm trying to contact them because I want to do one last big performance for an audience. I want to go on their show, get my hair and makeup done, get dressed up in a costume, have a choreographed dance, and I want to dance for the people watching the show for the last time. I want to give one last big performance as well, or even a couple. And it means the world to me, which is why I'm trying to get everyone I can find to share this not only to help me raise the money so that we can have this Christmas celebration what I'm calling the last standing celebration because it will basically be the last time I'm celebrating all standing possibly so I want to do this but I'm only on a disability pension and my friends and family are pitching in all these people that are supporting me are pitching in but it's going to cost a lot and we don't have enough and we don't have enough time to build up this up so that's why i'm asking for donations for help to help make this celebration possible and to help get the attention of the morning shows so that I can give one last big performance for an audience and have it so that it's recorded so I can walk, go back and watch it whenever I want so that when I'm old and grey, if I get that, if I live that long, um, to be able to look back and say, that was me, that's what I used to be able to do. So it means the world to me. Which is why I'm not only making this um, GoFundMe page um, to collect money for the um, celebration, but so that I can hopefully get the attention of the morning shows. I have sent them all messages explaining all this and asking for a favor from them and their fan and their viewers to be able to give me a chance for the last time to perform for a big audience. And it breaks my heart that it will be a last performance. And as much as it will hurt, I need to have this celebration and this big performance in front of a large audience before I get my legs cut off because I'll probably never be able to dance again. So please, even if it's $5, please help donate. And if you can't donate, that's fine, I understand. As someone who's financially challenged, I understand you can't always, even if you want to. 
but regardless of whether you donate or not, please share this. It's more important than the donations. Please just share it. Share this video. Share the GoFundMe page. And just help me to be able to do this. Please. I can't do this alone. I wish I could, but I can't. I tried to, and I can't. Which is why I need your help. So please. Please. Help me. Help me. Help my last dance. Help me help last celebration. Before my life changes forever. Help me get on to a morning show. So that. I can have one last performance in front of a crowd. Please. Help me. Please. You have no idea how much it would mean to me. If you can help me. Which is why I'm asking. Which is why I'm making this video. I'm going to try and leave it uncut. I'm going to leave this part in, even though I'm crying, because I want you to understand the gravity of how much this means to me. I need to have this celebration and one last big performance so that I can hold on to that when I'm going through the operation process when I'm getting my legs amputated, when I'm in recovery, and for the rest of my life, however long it may be. I need this, so please, donate, share, contact the morning shows, please, help me, please just help me. If you've gotten to this point, Thank you for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching it to the end. And if you're able to share this, if you're able to contact these shows, if you know somebody that works there, if you're somebody that works there, please help me. Help me, please. Please. Thank you so much for your time. And if you are able to donate and or share, thank you as well. You do, it means the world to me. It really does. It means everything. So please help me with this. Thanks. <laughs>